Cairo, Seattle. This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. And I'm Aaron Granilla. Governor Jay Inslee's stay-home order still allows some people to go to work. Including emergency services, health care industries, critical manufacturing, child care providers. Who else is considered essential? We will run down the list. Plus, Washington's new coronavirus czar on how the state is adding more resources to help our strained health care system. And Congress is on the verge of passing a $2 trillion stimulus deal, maybe even more than that. Stay with us. The governor's office sent out this 14-page document after he made the announcement about the stay-at-home order, and it outlines a a dozen or so sectors that are still deemed essential, people who can still go to work. They include sectors like health care, food, agriculture, emergency services, transportation. We got a number of listeners on our text line throughout the day today wondering, are are they still allowed to go to work, uh, essentially? So I want to start off with just a, a few few questions from people. Uh, One question we got, Dave, from the 253, does this stay-at-home order apply to hotel workers? Well, the short answer, Aaron, is yes, because the bullet point here, it's under the category other community-based government operations and essential functions, is a bullet point that says simply hotel workers. I imagine the idea is to make sure that uh, hotels still operate. Now, the of course, the problem is you don't want people gathering in lobbies. I just I was stayed in a hotel uh, last week in in uh, West Virginia. There was no mm-hmm. problem with people congregating because there were very few people staying there. But um, yeah, I would think that hotels would be safe for people who have to travel. But if you're one of the people cleaning up the rooms, obviously you'd want to sanitize them. You might even want to have a, uh, a a face mask. Just remind yourself not to touch your face if you touch the surface there before it was sanitized, uh, just to be on the safe side. Uh, another comment somebody said, I'm really confused. How is it that someone who makes the dough for pizza an essential worker? Well, they fall under the, the general food and agriculture yeah, food category. Yeah, it's, it's, you're a the restaurant government doesn't worker. want to limit your choice of food. They want you to eat. And exactly. pizza's legit. Are we going to make moral judgments that pizza <laughs> is not a worthy food, but chard is? That would be ridiculous. <laughs> That's right. Uh, another question we got, Dave, and I think you might have some insight on this from the 253. What about a landscape maintenance company? Yeah. Well, I know because we have sponsors that do landscaping work. Uh, they offer online consultations, so they don't have to make any contact. They they offer to do measurements from outside your home. So I guess that's uh, that's your call. The idea, and I think the the guideline to use here is the spirit of this is that you make it impossible for the virus to spread. The virus isn't magical. It travels in tiny droplets, which drop to the ground about six feet from where they emerge from your mouth or wherever. And so you need to stay beyond that. And, and, And let's be clear about this. These are tiny things. So even talking, as I am now, you are releasing a certain biological material. So if you can do it and you're wearing a mask or you're far enough away, then you can conduct the uh, the transaction. But uh, otherwise, if it requires, you know, sitting down in a, a large group to consult and uh, go over plans and stuff like that, that's the kind of thing you would not want to do. Right. Use common sense. If you are going to do business and it's still open, stay at least six feet away if you can. Uh, another comment we got from the 360, somebody says they work in the HVAC uh, business And they say that they will be staying open. Yeah, I mean, these are people who come in and they tune up your furnace and they replace the filters. Replacing the filters is uh, probably a good thing. Anything that makes you feel more comfortable at home, like making sure the heat is reliable and is on when you wake up in the morning, is a good thing because you'll be spending a lot of time in that home. (laughs) Indeed, yes. Another thing that I also saw is car repair shops. They're still open, too, uh, and also car dealerships, for that matter, because people need to get around, and a car is an essential mode of transportation, at least for now. Uh, So, yeah, so car dealerships and car repair shops, they'll also be be open under this uh, governor's order as well. Another comment, Dave, that I saw, pot is essential. Yes. What's that about? <laughs> well, uh, pot stores are open, uh, partially, I guess, because people take it for medicinal purposes. But, you know, uh, liquor stores are open, too, provided they sell food. Or grocery stores, of course, are open, and most grocery stores have a liquor cabinet. So, I mean, if you're looking for uh, some sort of escape, the controlled substances, the legal controlled substances, 
will still be available while you're isolating. And some might consider coffee a controlled substance. Well, yes. Coffee shops are still open as yes. well, just you can't congregate in any of those coffee shops. You can still get drive through though. That is still yes, open. The woman leading the state's health care response to the outbreak says we still don't know if the state's hospital system can keep up with the growing number of cases. Retired Navy Admiral Raquel Bona was in charge of ensuring staffing needs are met and medical supplies don't run out. Kyle Radio's Hannah Scotts just heard from her. Hannah, what did you learn from Admiral Bono? I definitely learned that really the state at this point doesn't have a clear picture of what everything looks like here. So her priorities are going to be to take care of our medical professionals. And she made a point to say that means not just making sure they have their protective equipment and all of that, but their their mental health, right? Making sure that they're not being overworked and uh, it's not all too much of a strain. At the beginning of the conversation, she was saying she didn't know if any of the hospitals were being overwhelmed yet at this point. So uh, another reporter asked her whether we had already turned turn the corner here in Washington state. First off, I don't think that we've gotten past this, so I think we need to be very vigilant. And part of the reason that I'm uncertain about some of these numbers is, frankly, um, being new to the area. So it sounds like she's saying we have not turned a corner. And then I do want to ask you, the stay-at-home order will last for at least two weeks. It feels like it's going to go beyond that. Absolutely. I was in a conference call with some of his cabinet uh, after that press conference last night, and his chief of staff said, I believe that at least some of this is going to continue beyond the two weeks. Uh, He pretty much just said it's a for sure thing. A lot of that is going to depend again uh, two weeks from now. What are our hospitals looking like? So by then, hopefully, the admiral will have found all of those numbers she's talking about, and we have a much clearer picture and whether they are being overwhelmed, whether they're do have the supplies and the medical staff that they need so we can at least deal with that. But it's also going to still be a factor whether people are social distancing and doing what he is now mandating, which is to stay six feet away from one another and follow all of these these rules. If they're not, it's going to escalate and we're going to possibly see an even more strict restriction on what you can do. Iowa Radio's Hannah Scott. Thank you for the time. You bet. President Trump wants the country open by Easter. He has this vision of people showing up for Easter Sunday mass in droves. He says the United States was not built to be shut down. And his remarks come as Congress tries to clinch this massive $2 trillion stimulus package to lift the economy. So let's talk about what's in it. And I think what is at the forefront of most people's minds here is these cash payments to Americans. We've been hearing a lot about just personal checks being sent out to most workers. The bill would direct payments of $1,200 to most American adults and $500 for each child as well. And it would create a $500 billion lending program for companies, for states, for cities. There is a, a, a large amount of money for airlines and, of course, for Boeing. And uh, money for hospitals as well, $370 billion for hospitals, to help small companies pay their workers, and also to beef up the country's unemployment insurance system. And that's a pretty important part of this, Aaron. Yeah, indeed. We could see the unemployment rate hit, I've seen numbers as high as 30 percent, and we haven't seen those kind of figures since the the Great Depression era. So the legislation would boost unemployment insurance, which basically means making more people eligible for it, and then offering workers an additional $600 a week for four months on top of what state unemployment programs already pay. Because under the unemployment system, you you get a certain number of weeks, and then you're expected to, of course, actively look for a job during that time, and uh, it runs out. Now, the requirement to actively look for a job is going to be pretty tough in this kind of environment if you have, God forbid, 30% unemployment. So this would uh, extend that so that at least you have a fighting chance of paying your rent and your other obligations. I wonder how much of an impact you think, Dave, all of these measures will have in in stopping this economic (laughs) freefall. Well, I mean, we saw how Wall Street responded. And uh, in general, you can look at that and see just how optimistic uh, investors are. Um, But we've also seen the opposite effect, where the more extreme these recovery measures are, 
the more investors and, of course, the people running the large uh, pension funds think, wow, this must be really bad if they're going this far. Mm. Um, but I think at this point, there may be a feeling, OK, the, the government's finally serious about this. They've essentially said they're going to print as much money as it takes to keep the economy afloat. And they feel secure in doing this because there has not been any inflation, despite the huge federal debt, $23 billion, and it will grow a lot more because of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also because the, the dollar, it, with respect to other currencies, remains pretty strong. So they've uh, they've essentially, they're writing a blank check. That's what yeah. I get from this. Yeah, I, I was actually watching an interview with somebody from the federal bank saying that they quite literally have an infinite amount of cash that they can print. Once Congress tells them, this is how much money we need for this bill, right? we can print that money for you. So the, yes. ba- the ATMs and all the banks, they will have cash to provide. Of course, it's not really printed. It's Jerome Powell pressing the enter key many times on his computer. Right, exactly. So that's where it stands today. There are still a lot of questions that we haven't handled. One of them is what happens to the food stamp program. Under the food stamp program, you have to show that you've been working a certain number of hours to qualify. And, of course, if you have uh, a lot of people unemployed, that's not going to work. And the other question is, uh, how do you prevent infections from spreading among homeless people who are in these various tent encampments? So those are among the things we'll be looking at tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast right here, and you can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live anytime at 97.3 FM.